All right, guys, so I've got an astro alert for you. We have some really intense energy on the way, and it's going to be a freaking cosmic tsunami. Um, it's going to be wild energy coming up. So tomorrow, 1015, we have the moon sextiling uh, Venus in, uh, or sorry, not the moon. We have Mercury sextiling Venus in Sagittarius. And this is going to be some international economics. Um, I know the general strike is planned. We'll see how that makes an impact. I'm sure it will. But I think we're going to hear stuff out of China about that Evergrande thing. Um, and that's going to really kick a ball rolling. Then Jupiter stations direct on the 17th. And it will be in direct motion on the 18th when Mercury stations direct. So here goes the energy. You know, so... Mercury, sextiling Venus and Sag, international finance, then boom, boom, direct motion. This is where there are, like, are seriously very few breaks left. Um, the energy now speeds up rapidly. And then we move uh, into the T-square of boom, what I'm calling the T-square of boom. And I did promise I would do some more videos about that. I will. I've been trying to get stuff organized um, all over the place in my online spaces got discord organized. So yay. But this T square of boom is the Aries moon in opposition to Mars. And they're both squaring off with Pluto. This is huge energy, massive amounts of energy. It is extremely explosive on a mundane level on a, you know, like the earth politics, you know, things that are kind of out of our personal control. This is explosive energy. I will not be surprised to hear about actual explosions. It could be volcanic. It could be like um, maybe like a chemical plant. I think a lot of that energy is going to happen in the eastern hemisphere of the globe. Okay. The eastern hemisphere of the world. Uh, because it happens really, really kind of late at night, early hours of the morning in the U.S. So... I, I think um, we could be looking at stuff happening in China, in Asia, as well as maybe that volcano in the Canary Islands. Um, so just keep your perspective. Uranus is, is still retrograde, so I think things will be not as big as they could be. So that's kind of nice. But it is a lot of energy. You might find yourself having a hard time sleeping that night. Um, you might feel some pressure in your head. I did an entire podcast. I was going to live stream earlier, but I did a podcast just about this energy, about surfing the cosmic tsunami. And you can go listen to that for free. It's in the link in my bio. Um, and I go even through the houses of what the themes would be, depending on where the moon and Aries will be. This impacts everybody, okay? Regardless of your sign, regardless of your placements, everybody has... Um, the areas or signs in their charts, okay? Just because you don't know how to find it yet doesn't mean it isn't there. And so you have Aries in your chart. You may not have any planets there, but it's in a house somewhere. So um, somebody always has to argue with me about that. And then I'm like, it's there, it really is. So this is a time to pull your energy inside it is not a time to be reactive. It will be very tempting to be reactive. There will be a lot to be reactive to. I give really good information on the podcast about that. So after the live stream, go run over and listen to my podcast or listen to it in the morning um, because it's so important. And there's no perfect in this life, guys. There's no perfect. There's no getting it all right. Everybody messes up sometimes. I mess up sometimes. I'm still reactive sometimes. It's really easy to like blame people for stuff, you know, and, and so I give strategies for how to pull that energy back inside. Look at your present moment. Look at what you can do because that's the best way to get through this energy and it will be a lot of pressure. Before anybody complains, I want you to really understand that that T-square boom hits me in the chops and so does the full moon. So it's like it's, it's I'm taking personal hits on this one. Um, so there's no point in complaining or being afraid. I don't give you heads up to scare you. I give you a heads up to prepare you. You have enough time to take a moment, work on yourself for a second, you know, take deep breaths and, and own your own emotional nature. 
okay? And instead of saying, well, I have this placement, so I'm always gonna be reactive. That's giving your power up to something else instead of owning your power, okay? That, that's just as good as, well, I've always been this way. I don't have to change. That's ridiculous. Of course you can. Of course you can go to the next level up on the energy. You know, again, it's, it's not about perfection. It's about correction. Okay. So if you want to get the most out of this, it's really important. Um, on a mundane level, again, this just kind of kicks things off and the energy just starts to shoosh off. So, right? Change is very much beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I actually give advice on all the houses in the, in the podcast. So I went through all the Aries houses, you know, first of all, you've got to let go of, of holding on to stuff. So personally, you know, you got to depersonalize, have faith in yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot more strikes. You know, you've got you've got the strike in Hollywood. You've got the strike, or for the film industry, you've got the John Deere strike. I think we'll see more. The general strike supposedly happens tomorrow. Um, with Mercury being retrograde, when that happens, we'll just see how it plays out. I think it'll make enough ripples, but who knows? Um, what's my podcast? It's in the link in my bio. It's the Awake Space Astrology Podcast. The Awake Space Astrology Podcast. And it doesn't have a regular schedule. It's I do it on my whim. My patrons sponsor it. So it is completely uncensored. It's completely me all the way. If you're you're fragile about swear words, it's probably not for you. Um, I, I censor myself here. Different audience. Uh, but I don't censor myself there. It's very authentic. Very real. Um, so yeah, so it's, everything's linked up in my bio here on TikTok. So you'll go, I made a link page on my website and you can just go to that and you can check everything out, whether it's the blog, the Patreon, the podcast, the classes I'm teaching. In fact, I've got a workshop. I got a couple workshops on Halloween. We're looking at Saturn through the houses and understanding your Saturn and how to work with that energy in your chart, as well as Saturn returns you get more than one in a lifetime so even if you passed your Saturn return you can still work with that energy and understand that there's another one you'll be looking at in 28 and a half years and it seems like a long time but it's a process so we're going to be going through that talk about that in the last podcast episode so yeah I'm talking about the Aries full moon actually talking about the day before the full moon okay so the 19th the 19th is uh, the T-square of boom, and that is late at night in the U.S. So late at night in the U.S. We've got the moon in opposition to Mars, and they are both squaring off with Pluto, which is why I'm calling it the T-square of boom. That sets up a very large wave of energy when the moon moves out of the T-square and then becomes full just hours later on the 20th, early in the morning. It's very, very explosive energy. Now, there's a couple of scenarios I have running around in my head guessing at the most likely possibilities. One, I think we will see actual explosions. It could be chemical plants. It could be um, some kind of big arson event. Um, these are on the mundane level, the mass consciousness level. It's very different energy than when we look at personal impact from these types of transits. You have a lot more agency, okay? To, to work with that energy in your personal life on a mass consciousness level, on a mundane level, when we look at the earth or, you know, politics, things like that. So I think on, um, we may be seeing some volcanic activity or some explosive activity. We could even see some actual um, conflict in certain parts of the world. It's like, again, I'm looking at the Eastern hemisphere of the globe for that. Um, and I think China's economic meltdown, we're really going to start hearing about it tomorrow when Mercury and Venus are sextiled um, because that Evergrande situation just doesn't seem to be getting any better. Um, so they've been trying to kind of hold off that bad news. I don't think they're going to be able to. So I think we're going to see some economic fallout. But on the 20th, again, that full moon happens really early in the morning in the U.S., 
And so to me, it's either we we're going to be looking at some information around January uh, 6th because the, the energy has some reflective qualities of that January 6th day. So there may be some bombshell news. There may be, um, there's big headlines no matter what. Now, on a personal level, like I said, I go through strategies for dealing with the energy on the podcast. So I don't want to repeat myself a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, mostly because it gets old for me. I have a Sag Mars. So um, you can go listen to the strategies on the podcast. But remember, it's about pulling your attention inside. Okay, you've got to know, you've got to stop kind of reacting and spreading your energy out when we even there's nothing wrong with being angry okay but you can focus anger and use it as a tool and a motivation right versus blah and then you just spread it shotgun it all over the place and and you don't get anything done with it it just you get this release but you've just now thrown away the opportunity to work with a vast amount of energy you can harness that energy to do something for you and it just depends on what's going on in your own chart. I go through those steps in the podcast. That's free, guys. The patrons, my patrons sponsor that podcast. Um, so, and I am forever grateful to them for that because then I don't have to go look for sponsorships and I don't have to like censor myself. I can give you all the information. I don't have to play nice with anybody. I can just be straight up with you. And you deserve that. So, um, huge thanks to my patrons. Yeah, the John Deere workers. I saw that. Hey, Rita. So, exactly. Enact instead of react. When you pull that energy inside, and it's hard because you're going to be like, don't do it, 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 don't do it. And the more you do that, by the way, it makes it worse. Like, don't react, don't react, don't react, don't react, don't. And it's like priming the pump, right? You're building up the pressure instead of like, okay, that just pissed me off. What can I do? You know, what can I do? What can I do about it? What productive thing can I do for myself right now? You could physically do something. You could work on something for yourself. You do some self-care. Um, I give some real strategies. I give examples about where I've given my own power away, you know, and it was really easy to blame other people, right? It's always easier to blame somebody else. But, you know, there might be somebody who takes up a lot of your time. But if you're giving your time to them, are they really taking it? Or are you handing it to them? You know, so sometimes we have to silence our phone and just not take calls or messages and just put our head down and do our thing. Sometimes we need to look at the objective because if you're taking care of yourself and you're meeting your needs, then you have more to share and give with other people. This isn't about rugged individualism. There's a very big difference. But when we're scattering our energy all over the place and we're only operating out of obligation, we're subjugating ourselves versus empowering ourselves. And, and there's some nuance to this and it takes time to learn. And honestly, I think it's a lifelong process. I don't think you ever get it 100%. I'm 52. I'm still getting it down. I'll be like, oh, I was being resentful, but I, I gave my time away to that. You know, I frittered away that time doing this thing or talking to this person or, you know, I didn't have to. I could have a boundary, you know, Libra Moon. Oops. You know, and so instead of being like, oh, why did I do that? It's important to be like, OK, what is my objective? And you can let go of some of some of the things in your way and own your own power. Power isn't about dominance and control. It's just knowing who you are. And it's really hard to control somebody who knows how to control their own reactivity, who knows who they are. Um, it does not mean put up with bad behavior. You know, it could be maybe somebody's aggressing you and instead of getting in, in, into it with them or begging them to stop, you can go, you can leave, you know. And I talk about that on the podcast as well. You know, um, I, I've had to make hard decisions in life. It's not always easy. So, um, and this energy isn't necessarily easy energy, but it's very growth oriented. It's very decision based. Nobody likes making decisions, especially the tough ones. And sometimes the right decision is the hardest one to make. Okay. Sometimes the right decision is the hardest one to make. Okay. Regardless of what it is about. And often that means choosing 
ourselves, okay? And it depends on who you are. But a lot of times we've given up our power to other people and we don't choose ourselves. And if you're not putting your own oxygen mask on right now, if you're not making sure that your little nest is taken care of, it's gonna be pretty hard to interact with other people. Um, likewise, if you're not in the right kind of a group or association or, you know, it's not working for you, then it's time to find groups of people who do work for you, you know, and align up. It's aligning in with, with that sense of self. So, yeah. <laughs> Read you to the fifth. Oh, babe. Oh, hugs. Why are things so terrible? I don't know. Are they terrible? And they're not terrible for me. So I, I don't know your chart, honey, you know, so that's why I do readings for people. I can't, I can't give you that information. They're honestly not terrible. Things are breaking apart for a reason. Um, I just reordered my discord and I put up a, a bunch of the posts I wrote, um, on my blog from last year and this year. So like back in May, I was telling you there was going to be supply chain disruptions. There was going to be a bunch of stuff. It's not terrible. These were faulty systems. I've been talking about this for a very long time. Faulty systems are going away. And instead of trying to fight for them to continue to exist, we need to build better and more sustainable systems. And funny enough, we are responsible for that. We are responsible for that in our own daily lives. So connecting to people who align with us, um, not just like-mindedness, but like-heartedness, owning our own power. You know, they're telling you just go shopping. Buy your Christmas presents now because they're trying to pad their fourth quarter earnings. What does that tell you? They're reliant on you to keep their economy going, but they're not willing to pay a decent rate or make sure your basic needs are covered. And they think it's okay for people to be homeless, but just go shopping. Are you fucking kidding me? In the 21st century, we're still there? It makes no sustainable sense. None, none. Sorry, I didn't censor myself. I normally do here on TikTok and I normally save that kind of talk for my podcast, but yeah. I have many memorable years with, with transits. I do. Yeah, I do. We're living through some of them. So yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I know the marketing has started. I'm not surprised by it. I worked in corporate marketing. So um, with communications like chart like I had, how could I have not ever been in sales and marketing? Um, but here's the deal. There's still going to be, you know, tremendous amounts of supply chain issues. I don't think Walmart's going to be able to get it done. Um, I think all of the efforts to try to keep things going, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. It's just going to chug along and clunk and fall, chug and fall, chug and fall. Um, things just speed up. And and the energy, like we're, we're going downhill rapidly. We kind of start, we'll slow a little bit in December. I mean, not in December, but in November. But it, it, it's not going to slow that much. And then we're going to hit a wall December 24, 2021. And that's when we have the final Saturn Uranus square. Now I've got, if you go to the link in my bio, I did a seminar on September 17th about um, how to prepare for the end of 2021 and early 2022. We kind of talked a little bit into April, but really focused on January and February and March. Um, so looking at this fall into winter and a lot of its weather, a lot of its climate, now it's making the news, now the weather agencies are talking about it. I've been getting people prepared for an inclement weather and in really cold weather um, east of the Rockies. Don't even start with me about where east of the Rockies is, guys. Just don't, don't try my patience. You can find a map and look up the Rocky Mountains. I'm just gonna say it, okay? But it's gonna be a really, really rough winter. Okay, it, it, Southwest isn't going to be so much, but everywhere else is going to be kind of nuts. And so, um, 
you're gonna wanna watch out for power outages. You wanna be prepared for very cold weather. Texas, looking at your grid. I've been saying it for months. We have a preparations thread where people have been trying out products and getting ready in their own regions uh, people growing things inside their home, whether it's just leafy greens. I've been telling people since 2020, it is essential that you grow whatever you can grow. Okay, even if you live in an apartment, you can set it up. And we've got some great examples going on in our preparation thread in the Discord. In order to get access to that, you can join Patreon. So yeah, east of the Rockies, exactly. What about weather in California? I've talked a lot about that. We're not gonna really get the rain we need. We might get some, but we're not gonna get everything. It's gonna remain dry just because of the way that jet stream is gonna go. You can just watch Noah for that. Um, but yeah, no, we're not, we're not gonna end our drought, I don't think, in looking at the weather models that, that the, the meteorologists are putting out. It's kind of showing the same thing. So, but yeah. Yeah, those ships, right? They are crazy. Oh, wait. You went whale watching out in Long Beach and the ships look like traffic jam? Yeah, exactly. I don't know about you, but on Monday, I was driving to Riverside and the amount, like, there must have been a ship get unloaded. Uh, a ship got unloaded probably like in San Diego or something because the line of trucks was insane as it was driving towards LA. It was just a massive amount of trucks. And I'm like, wow, what, what cargo ship got unloaded? Because it was insane amount of trucks. Um, there's always some trucks on the 60, but this was a lot of trucks. And so I'm like, oh, wow, somebody unloaded. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be wild. And, um, and, and we're going to watch that labor movement continue. This is just the beginning of this. This is just Saturn in Aquarius getting us ready for Pluto in Aquarius coming in 2024. Uh, so the system is still dismantling, okay? The system is still dismantling. It will continue to dismantle as long as Pluto is in Capricorn. Um, and we're just going to keep watching the Jenga Tower get its pieces pulled out. So... Oh, more dolphins. I love that. I love dolphins. It says, yes, it says life is better with coffee. Yes, because coffee is everything. Coffee is life. Yes, it is. Yep. Do you think there's going to be huge inflation for a long time? Yeah, I think there's going to be global inflation. I do. Until we go back to regional supply chains, yeah. As long as we keep trying to do centralized supply chains and importing stuff from all over the place instead of doing what we used to do, which didn't make mega billions. You know, it was inconvenient for corporations. And when we allowed people to consolidate, like when we got rid of the monopoly laws in most countries, it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. It was the 90s. I remember just arguing when I was in college in the 80s and, or, you know, I graduated in 90. And I would sit with international business students. I'd be like, what drugs are you people on? This is the dumbest thing. This, there's no national security in this. Because I was an international relations major and, and cultural anthropologist minor. I'm like, there's no national security in this. What are you people thinking? And they were like, no, it maximizes profits. I'm like, at what cost? You know, so who was right? You know, so there we go. Um, no, I don't think we're going to, I already said it. We're not going to get out of the drought. We're not, we're, we might have a little bit. We might have some moments, but it, California is not going to get out of the drought. Southwest will be cool and dry. You know, we're not going to be super hot, but we'll, we'll remain dry for the most part. Hopefully we'll get some rain. That would be nice. So, yeah, it is, it, it's been that way for a long time and people were kept so busy that, you know, nobody questioned it or thought to argue it because they were tired. They were working in the pandemic, gave everybody pause and went, you know what? Fuck this. I, if, I, if I'm going to face death, I'm not going to deal with this. So, you know, we're looking at a lot of systemic change. You can go onto my blog and read about it to scroll back to last year's blog posts. I know there's a lot of blog posts there to scroll through. You'll find them. But yeah, 
Well, yeah, it's going to be exceptionally rainy in New York, and it's going to be very cold. And it, and you're going to have winter very soon. End of end of October, it's going to snap. So careful. And that winter is going to kind of run through the spring. So we've been preparing for that in the Patreon Discord for quite a while. And then anybody who does readings with me, I give you exactly what's going on for you. Um, especially with that final Saturn Uranus square uh, of December 24th. That's a lot of energy happening. We want to look back to like uh, February 17th, January 14th, that kind of energy and, um, and what it's impacting in your personal chart. That's what I talk about in, in some of the readings, like personal transits, um, the career life path, hidden treasures, year ahead. Um, all of those are there. So, and if you want to book a reading with me, the link is in my bio and you can do that. November is booked. You're going to have to wait till December to get in. Um, I'll be teaching some workshops though. I've got the workshop on how to prepare for the end of 2020 as well as, uh, early 2022. That is already, that's linked up. You can go to Vimeo and stream it. Um, I've got, uh, the Saturn and Saturn return workshops happening on October 31st, understanding how to deal with Saturn is really, really important as we go forward because you need your drive, your ambition, and your discipline, and you need to understand it in a different framework than we've had in, in uh, late stage capitalism. You need to reframe what your ambitions are for you, what fulfillment is, what kind of discipline and structure you need in your life to make it go. Um, discipline is not a bad thing. I talk about that on my podcast in the last episode before this one, where I talk about the cosmic tsunami and how to surf it for the T-square. Oh, boom. Um, yeah. Thank you, Austin, Michael. I don't think there is a massive exodus happening out of California. I think that's a myth. I don't think it's bearing out. There is a new podcast, Ben. How you doing? Did you get back to uh, Kiwiland yet? Hey there. How you doing in New York? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, honestly, right now I'm looking more, I'm, I'm starting to look more at 2022 um, in 2023, I kind of feel done with 2021 because I've been warning about all of this for so long. I've been kind of living in the future. And now that we're here, I'm trying to take care of my stuff that I need to get taken care of. Um, so I can meet the future the best I can. Um, uh, because honestly, I really poured a lot into making sure I could get as many people ready for it as I could. Um, I feel pretty satisfied with the information I've managed to get to people. And I think people are much more ready for things and the energy that comes up. We're all deconstructing patriarchy within ourselves and without. And um, it's not going to go without a little gnarly fight, you know. So, um, and that includes within ourselves. You know, when we look at our internalized misogyny, when we look at our internalized biases, um, where we give our power away, where we... Um, over assert ourselves into things that maybe are our business even um, where we kind of fight for our position and scramble for for things and and understanding your ambition in different ways is important so I kind of poured a lot into making sure I could get as many people ready as I could now I'm kind of pulling back just a little bit to get my own stuff taken care of um and I will have um, a December workshop. I've got the, no the or a November workshop and I'll have a December workshop as well, um, deciding on planets. So Saturn is October. I haven't decided on November yet. Um, I might do Mars. I don't know. December is totally Jupiter because we have Jupiter ingressing into Pisces at the end of December. It'll be December 30th. It, it's not all hippy skippy joy joy news though. I know there's again the astrologers are going to be like it's magic and it can be but it's also COVID so and just like I said there's no COVID lockdowns you know um, I saw there was a slowdown in the economy I saw that we were not going to really have lockdowns they were going to try to keep things normal 
and kind of, it, it, I, I, not in the United States anyway. I mean, obviously New Zealand is doing right by their people, but you know, uh, I'll talk more about the eclipse when we get to closer to it. I know we've got it coming up in November and December. Oh, thanks for the reminder. Um, I, I, I'll talk about that when we get closer to it. Yeah, it's global. This is global. It's not just the United States. This is entirely global. In fact, I think the news we get tomorrow, I think it's coming out of China and I think it impacts the EU and I think it impacts the US. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is global. Our economic system is entirely global. It's so intrinsically tied that what happens one place cannot but effect and impact another place. Absolutely. I, I see more people quitting. Absolutely. I don't, I, I see more people starting their own businesses. Um, I see, um, I see more people maybe looking to form workers co-ops, finding ways to work together, more people freelancing, becoming independent contractors. And, um, yeah, and I see more strikes and unionization efforts. I've been talking about the labor movement all year long. I know I'm, I'm new to a lot of you. Oh, oh thank you. I love that one. Um, I've been talking to you guys all year long about this, and I know a lot of you are new to me, you know, but I've been predicting these things. This is no surprise to me. It was really clear in the astrology. It was just crystal clear. Um, it's honestly very, very basic mundane astrology. This isn't even the complex stuff. This is just like big, bold letters. So, yeah. Oh, don't be, don't be sorry. There is a lot coming. Anything with the coming full moon? Yeah, I talked about that on the beginning of this um, live stream. Uh, the T-square on the 19th is much more concerning to me than the actual full moon. I think the full moon is a huge release of that T-square. Uh, so the T-square is from the moon in opposition to Mars. They're at, they'll be at 23 degrees, squaring off with Pluto on the 19th. Happens late in the evening on the Pacific coast. So that tells me it's really the eastern hemisphere of the globe that's being impacted. And we can see actual explosions going on um possible volcanic action definitely see some economic action tomorrow so global finance is really up on deck tomorrow it'll be all over the news um but there there's some big stuff happening it could be volcanic it could be actual explosions of other kinds um there's certainly a lot of tension building on the 19th and i'm talking about Pacific time, so it would be probably on the 20th on the Eastern Hemisphere, and then that full moon happens hours later in the early hours of the 20th on the Pacific Coast, and that's a release of that energy. That's why I'm calling it a cosmic tsunami. I did a podcast episode where I kind of gave the information I believe that'll happen on the mundane level, and then how to deal with things as an individual on a personal level. Because mundane and personal energy works differently. You can get caught up in the mundane energy and just be like a robot and sucked up into all kinds of things. Or you can use your agency and, and bring your energy inside and kind of deal with that wave the best you can. Um, it is intense. So if you have a bad day, if you have a moment, don't beat yourself up about it. Just do your best to realign. You know, it's not about perfection. You know, we all, we came to this world for, for the whole ride. We're not just here to be like, ah, we're here for the Tower of Terror. We're here for the roller coaster ride. We're here for the teacups. We're here for all of it. We're in an intense time period. It's an intense time of change. We were all born for this time. But in order to maximize our purpose here, we need to own our own authority and our own agency and we've got a lot of it they wouldn't be telling us buy more stuff if we didn't have more power okay they want those fourth quarter earnings and they're hurting so if there's companies you don't like well don't buy from them put your money where you want it to go 
because they wouldn't keep giving that message, get your Christmas presents, get your Christmas presents, you know. And I talk about this on the podcast as well. I have some really strong opinions about consumerism, okay? I, I really do. There's a lot of stuff, like even back, like my very first business, I had a, I, I sold my hand spun yarn, but it really, really bothered me. Even though I made this beautiful stuff and it was very high quality and it was ethical and blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, but is it still going to end up in a landfill? Like how much of this is, is going to last? At least what I made was biodegradable, but still, right? I mean, is that the only way, you know? And so there are things we can do, but this idea that you have to make stuff and sell stuff and that's the only way, it, it's not, it, constant growth is not sustainable. And we're seeing that right now. We see how it's impacted the planet, our environment, our ecology. You know, as much as climate change is a big problem, so is our water supply. Um, there's huge heating issues. I've been talking about oil and gas issues all year as well. Looks like there's a heating short, a heating oil shortage. We've got a national natural gas shortage. So it's really, really important to have, like, if you're especially in the Northeast, you need to have some kind of alternative heating that doesn't produce carbon monoxide if you live in an apartment, etc. Yeah, quality over quantity, yeah. I've been talking about, yeah, thank you, Max, LA Floof. Yeah, exactly. So, it is. It is. I, I already saw some reports about it. And um, so you just got to kind of do your best. I've been suggested get wool, get wool, get wool as much as you can. And here's the funny thing. Back like in the mid 2000s, we offshored all of our wool production in this country. Like, oh, we don't need any wool. Wool keeps you warm when it's wet. Just saying. So... Good luck on the East Coast is all I got to say. And in the Midwest, even down into Texas, you guys have got to really prepare for this winter. And I've been warning Texas all summer long to be ready because that grid on December 24th, it's not good. It's not good. That Saturn Uranus square happens again. And Christmas Eve is going to definitely be memorable across the globe. But, you know, weather-wise in the United States, it's not good. Wow. Petrol in the water supply. Wow. Right? Told you, Rita. You can come see me. Yeah, it's good. You got your coat. Good. Get get the things you need to get. We that's why we have the preparations thread in the Discord. It's you know, it's sad it's kinda of got to the point. I've never been a prepper. But I lived in the Northwest. I lived there for a really long time in the up, upper Northwest Washington where there's very, very bad winters. Um, like huge storms every year. It never makes the news because it's so common and there's not very many people there. But it's really, you, almost every November you get really, really high winds. And it wasn't uncommon to have 60 mile an hour gusts and you know really big trees, they go boom. Um, so I, I would have to get ready for winter in the, oh, I love the origami cranes. Those are, are so cool. Um, but I used to have to get ready in the summer for the fall storms and the winter storms. Um, and so it's just good to always be prepared. You know, did it get bad every winter? No. But then I could help out a food bank or I could help out people who needed help. Some, there was always somebody around, you know, the holidays who needed something, you know, so we could donate to those things. So, yeah. Yeah. Pick tons of veg veggies for the winter. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, make pickles. Exactly. I grew up with a big garden and we always, like, we always pickled and canned and I grew up doing all of that. My family was like really into that. It was a beautiful garden. I grew up in Oregon and, um, and I taught my kids and funny enough, both my kids have been doing it, you know, so they both have gardens. 
Um, they both have chickens and ducks, and they're both very, very ready. I felt very proud as a mom that I prepped them for these times. Um, because they grew up with me saying 2020 is a really big year. I don't know what's coming, but you need to be ready for it. And you have to have lots of different skills. You have to have hands-on skills. Oh, I like that. Thank you. You have to have hands-on skills and you have to have tech skills. So I taught them a wide range of skills to help them in life. Um, a lot of people thought I was crazy. You know, I talked about it for years. We're going to go through massive systemic change and it's going to happen for a long time. So there's that. Yeah. So it's super important, guys. Um, I'm just going to let you know, if you wanted to take the Saturn return class, I have a scholarship available for 50% off. That, that code is almost expired. I think it goes to the 19th. I have to look. Um, but I believe, I know it's still good right now. It saves you 50% on the workshop. So if you want to understand Saturn returns, and how Saturn returns operate in your chart, you can take the scholarship code and save 50%. I want people to be able to have access to that because understanding your Saturn return, the process will help you go forward, even if you're past your Saturn return. Um, so like right now, I'm in the last square of Saturn to Saturn before my next Saturn return. So there's, there's like an incremental process that's involved with the Saturn return. And then it creates a chart. I talk about that, not in this latest podcast episode, but the previous episode. And I talk about my own Saturn return chart from 1999 and then looking at the 2028 chart. And so it's kind of, it's kind of fascinating and it really helps you get deliberate in your own energy. Okay. So you can work with energy. You're not stuck on a self determined you know, on one path, you can work with different layers. And, and work within the fan of possibility and probability so that you can work with better energy. So there's that. Um, and then we've got Cosmic Surfers and Living by Luna this Sunday. So, and we're gonna be getting ready for the Cosmic Tsunami. Um, that's just wild energy. So again, on the 19th, it is really, really powerful energy and it happens late at night in the united states late at night early hours of the morning i think on the east coast but i think it's late at night i have, I have to look at the times again but it's leading me to believe this is happening in the eastern hemisphere of the globe so it's not north or south america it's the eastern hemisphere of the globe there's something very very volatile very it's, it's such huge energy um it's so much pressure that it is, it's extremely explosive energy. So it could be volcanic, it could be an actual explosion, it could be a chemical plant, it could be conflict stirring on a border. Um, it, it's a lot there uh, with the moon in opposition to Mars and Libra, both of those squaring Pluto and Capricorn. It's a lot, a lot of energy. It could be another accident that like screws up production or screws up the supply chain even further. It could be big weather. Um, it could be a lot of things. And then on the 20th, just hours after that, you know, so it's like eight hours later, we have that full moon. And that full moon is the release of that T-square energy. I mean, it just goes boom. I think in the US, we might hear more about January 6th than with the events that happened that day as, as things possibly get released, more information gets released. Um, that energy really mirrors January 6th in some ways. Um, it's very fascinating that full moon is happening at 27 degrees. On January 6th, Mars was moving into Taurus um, during that insurrection. And so the moon is at 27 degrees Aries and it will be moving into Taurus that day. This tells me things are very, very financial. Um, and stability oriented. So as the moon moves out of Aries into Taurus, it's still in the full phase. And so there's definitely some economic whammies we're gonna be feeling, um, but it's global. It's not just in the US, this is global. So yeah. Well, it, you know, it depends on what you make moon water for, you know, um, I, don't, I don't think, it depends on what you're gonna use it for. You know, you don't just make moon water to make moon water. You always have an intent. Um, 
I, I don't think it matters. I think there's a lot of people who don't understand the magic they do. Um, but yeah, I would certainly charge some of my crystals. If I had protective stones, I'd so charge them under that Aries moon. Are you kidding me? That's amazing energy for protective work. Talk about pack a wallop. And see, I, I'm an energy worker. Um, I don't really call myself a witch. Some people might call me a witch. Um, some people might call me another name. But uh, I, I have no problem tossing energy around. So if, if I wanted to charge my crystals for protective energy to make sure it packed a wallop if somebody breached my boundaries, that's the moon I'd do it under. Um, I, I don't believe in the rule of three or the threefold law. I don't, it's a bullshit. So, yeah, then use it. That's, it, it's the best energy for that. So, there is nothing wrong. You can be non-reactive and hold boundaries. And sometimes our boundaries have to be like, shove off. So, you don't have to put up with crap. You know, especially if, if, if you've been socialized as female or you identify as female, that whole having to be nice thing, that's bullshit. You don't have to be nice. Take it from a Libra moon who learned, I didn't have to be nice. So. Oh, you know, the threefold thing is like, whatever you toss back comes back at you three times. It's not true. You know, if you believe that, it's true. But not everybody adheres to it. I don't. Everybody's impacted by the Aries moon. If you want to know about what happens, go listen to my podcast. The link is in the bio. I just did a podcast episode. It's free. Go listen to that. I haven't done any blog posts about the Venus retrograde. Um, I'll probably do a podcast about it. Um, right now I'm focusing on the Aries full moon. But you're right. That Venus retrograde should be interesting, especially since it's in Capricorn. Um, what's more fascinating is the Pluto Venus conjunction in December and then, um, and then Venus will go retrograde and comes back over the top. This will be very financial. Again, we're looking at economy in this. Um, but yeah. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you enjoy them. Yeah. Listen to this one. This one, I go through the cosmic tsunami, how to ride that wave, how to deal with that moon in Aries. It's going to be tough for a lot of people, but you know, sometimes life is freaking hard. Deal with it. You've got to have some discipline. You know, you've got to work on yourself and you've got to own, you're not going to make it if you don't bring that energy inside and own your own personal power, which means owning your own reactivity. And I give some really good examples on my own reactivity, okay? I don't pretend I'm perfect. I know a lot of stuff. Embodying it and living it is another story. And we all kind of find where we need to course correct. Perfection is not the point, correction is. Okay, the power is in the noticing, the perfection's in the correction. So it's not about getting it done right. That whole perfectionist thing is bullshit to start with. And second of all, it's promoted in schools to disempower you, okay? Now, I know there's a lot of wonderful school teachers, but the system itself is designed to create unthinking people in a labor force, okay? If it was designed to create well-adjusted individuals who know how to work, play, and collaborate together, we'd have a much different society, wouldn't we? That whole socialization is about forcing people to operate in a certain way and they separate people out and who into who fits in and who doesn't fit in in that system okay so if you didn't fit in now is your time as we move towards pluto and aquarius get ready to fly your freak flag it's gonna be okay because collectivism doesn't mean conforming being a conformist okay yeah Ha <laughs> ha, Kramer B, you're funny. Divesting from people pleasing, you betcha it's your work this season. I talk a lot about that. Now, I have a Libra moon and I'm a Cancer. I often have taken responsibility for the well being of other people, right? Even this year, 
I kind of slowed my own self down to be ready for the fall and winter because I was helping get so many other people ready. And then I was like, okay, you've got people ready as you can get. You need to get your ass ready. So I've got to do some things really quick, like um, to get myself in position where I want to be because I was trying to get as many people ready as I could. Um, so I'll be making adjustments to schedules and things going forward. I'll be teaching more workshops, um, you know, and, and adjusting myself and what I do so that I can maximize what I'm doing in my life. Um, I love all the readings I do. Don't get me wrong. It's just, I haven't been able to take care of a lot of stuff I need to take care of outside of reading for people. Um, because of the schedule so i just need to reorg and i knew i knew i would but i was still making sure other people were okay and i kind of cut it close I, I still have time for me i know my chart really well but i could have organized it better and i did that to me nobody else did that to me i did that to me and that's not victim blaming that's just owning up to it I'm like oh yep yeah, nope i gotta i gotta fix that i gotta mm, nope so I talk about how to deal with that and how to work through some of those feelings on the podcast. So, yeah. Alrighty. So your Aquarius moon is ready. I bet. I bet. Okay. So we've got lots of things going on. Let me take a look. Yep. Oh my gosh. So many things. All the things. Um, I love it when I get a ton of phone notifications happening. Oh, hey. So, yeah. Exactly. Me too. Burn it down. Burn the system. It's not worked. It's never worked. And yet, you can't just not have a system. We need a system. Like, there's always a system. Okay? There's ecosystems, right? And so... It's important for each one of us to develop our, our EQ, our emotional intelligence, and to um, develop our ability to communicate and collaborate and play, um, to work with one another, to develop our listening skills. Uh, that's what Saturn in Aquarius is telling us to do. It's not like trying to force your agenda. I want everybody to think like me and do what I want. You know, we, we can't operate that way. We have to feel fulfilled on the inside but we have to learn to listen very carefully. And I saw something, I don't know if you guys know who Gary V is, but I love Gary Vaynerchuk. I think he's just a very honest and authentic person. Um, not everybody is gonna like what he does, but I loved what he had to say. He's like, I'd rather hear a customer than listen. And when he said hear a customer, he was saying, you know, he quoted Henry Ford as saying, if I listened to my customers, I would have built a faster horse. Um, and so with Gary Vee, with the wine company, he was talking about something in 2012. Um, he didn't ask people, what kind of wine do you want to drink? He was like, what was the favorite, your favorite wine you've had in the last you know, month? And that question gave him more information instead of what do you want me to sell? And so learning to listen to people, um, you can hear, you know, are they scared? Are they reacting because they, they're scared? Are they afraid of being irrelevant? Are they afraid of their security going away? Why are people misbehaving? Um, why are they reactive? It isn't just because they're an asshole. Like everybody can be an asshole. I can be an asshole. When is that? If I feel threatened, if I feel my security is at risk, if I feel personally attacked, um, it's really easy to be reactive in that point. But is that what's actually happening? Okay, there's a lot of times based off perception, it might be different language happening. And so it's important to make those connections. Yeah. Absolutely. Same, Gregory. Same. We do need a people's system, but the people need to know how to communicate with themselves first. We've got a little bit of time. We need to know how to communicate to ourselves. We need to have better boundaries. It's not about sacrifice and martyrdom. It's not about overgiving. It's not about, oh, here, take everything I've got. You can't do that. It's got to be mutual, okay? Um, people need to be able to take care of themselves. And those that can't need to be supported, absolutely. Um, but we also have to believe in people's capacity as well and not assume anything and so learning to listen learning to have dialogue 
is huge. Communication is everything. And we really haven't been taught that. Not through systems. You've been taught to write. You've been taught to listen for information. But most people are having rhetorical conversation instead of really listening to what's there. And, and a lot of communities start and fail because people don't have well-described understandings of big concepts like community. What does community actually mean? People will try to form a community making the assumption that everybody in that group thinks it's the same thing. And then they find out when they get started, everybody has a different idea of what that means. You know, and there'll be somebody who says, I don't like rules, but they're the one who likes to make the rules. There's always something. So it takes time to learn some of this stuff. So it's really important to dig in and find resources about communication. What is it like to work in an integrated system with other people? How do, like like-mindedness isn't always enough. Sometimes we need like like-heartedness. Like what's the objective a community wants to meet? What do people need? What are the resources necessary? And what does support actually look like? And um, I remember somebody once asked me like, what's kind of support you need? And honestly, at that time, I couldn't answer it. I had no idea what support would look like to me. None. What I didn't, you know, because I was so used to over giving of my own time and talents and abilities and skills and emotions. I didn't have a clue about what it looked or felt like coming back at me. And I had to learn that. And this is, man, over a decade now, you know, um, where I sat and I went, I don't know. I don't know what it looks like coming back at me, you know, and I thought about, well, what do I give? And where I started was, what do I give to other people? What do I give to other people? And what do I not allow to come back at myself? You know, what do I push away for whatever reason that is necessary to feel supported? So you can't, right now we have kind of a system where leaders are outside of the circle, especially in a people's group. Leaders are outside the circle of support versus part of the group where every, it, it's, it's, it's a fluid authority when it's a people's group. So it's not about being large and in charge. You still need people who are like executive committees, people who make decisions. It can't be all idea people. You need execution, right? That happens a lot in groups as well. Is people have tons of ideas, but you need somebody to actually do stuff too. So that's important. But yeah. We have been condi- conditioned, but at the same time, it's not your job to get people to see it. You just need to work with people who see it the way you see it. It's not, it's not going to take everybody to make it happen. It just takes finding small groups of people who are willing to collaborate. Um, You don't need to go convince people of anything. We're not here to evangelize anything. If you have a small community and you can build and build solutions and things like that, get involved in your local politics, et cetera, just do that. Do that. Don't wait for somebody else, you know. Find people that work together with you, but don't try to convince everybody else you're not going to. There's a thing called cognitive dissonance. People have really strong beliefs. If you go back to my 2020 blog post, I was warning about warring rhetoric, the polarization on beliefs, the good guys, the bad guys. I can honestly tell you when it gets into high level decision making, it's a bunch of incompetent people who want to remain in power. If they were competent or evil geniuses, we, we would have very different problems. So it's important to learn to communicate, collaborate, and play, okay? So if you go listen to my previous podcast episode where I talk about Mercury and Saturn, there's a lot in there about training your mind, training your Mercury. It is not trained through school, okay? In fact, it's kind of decommissioned on critical thinking. In fact, a lot of times we watch the spark go out of kids' eyes around seven or eight years old, around second and third grade. Some kids manage to keep it maybe to fourth grade. But by forcing them to be realistic, by them losing their ability to magically think, um, we take the wonder out of life. We start conditioning them to sit still. If they can't sit still and sit at a desk and listen and do what they're told, and you know, no wonder they, they feel awful. No, no wonder so many kids don't, you know, they, they have 
poor sense of self. You know, they don't get to be themselves, you know, and, and in society, we can have a healthy society where people are well actualized because the more self actualized you are, the more self aware you are, the more you're able to work in concert with other people, the less self aware you are, the harder it is for you to communicate, collaborate and play. And so that's where rugged individualism comes in. And when people are like, my rights, uh, let me tell you something, buddy. <laughs> it's like, that's a really poor developed Mercury. You know, that somebody doesn't have very good critical thinking because they don't realize you do have individual rights. And yet, so does the collective. So, um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Collaborating and teamwork is great. Yep. That's exactly who I'm alluding to. Yeah. You know, again, you have to wear shoes, people. For the same reason as you're wearing a mask. Germs. Germs. How would they feel if we took off, if like we went and we walked in the mud and then we went to a restaurant, we put our feet up on the table sitting next to them. They would freak the hell out. Same deal. Only you can't see the germs. So, you know. I don't know. I haven't seen the studies on it. Aww. So we'll see a lot of systemic changes as we go along. We're in the thick of it, and we'll continue to be in the thick of it. These transits go on for quite a long time. We're not, we're not out of the woods. We're in the middle of change. We're at the, be- we're not at the beginning. The beginning of the change happens subtly. Now we're in like the the thick of the big changes. They continue for the next, you know, five six years. You know, there's going to be stuff come up and come up and come up, and you know. Um, I tried to teach about these things um, in lots of different ways over the last 20 years, trying to get people ready. Um, Obviously, it wasn't until 2020 that I was going to reach enough people to do that. Right, I know what Alpha and Theta are. Bill Clinton's hospitalized? Really? That's fascinating. Well, he doesn't have a great ticker, so... Yeah, once in a lifetime generation. Yeah. Well, the Pluto transit is quite a long transit in Aquarius. And so, again, it, we're going to see more in the early part of Pluto in Aquarius. It's more dismantling and disruption of systems while um, collectivism begins. It's certainly not kumbaya and unity consciousness. And I know there's some people in that claim to be astrologers who say that, but it's it's not going to be that. It's forced evolution. Um, We're nowhere near that. People aren't going to suddenly wake up and go, oh, it's not happening. It doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. Um, You know, so what will happen is the need to collectivize will become bigger and bigger and bigger. And my thoughts are it's going to be climate change economics and climate change. Um, COVID was just kind of the thing that kicked us over, but we would have had problems no matter what. This just showed the urgency and we need to um, work collectively. There's huge, we're going to have huge infrastructure failures. You know, that's coming up in the next couple of years and there'll have to be a rebuilding of infrastructures using green solutions, sustainable solutions. So, you know, that's, all part of what it's on the way. Um, I think in 30 years, we'll have a more global structure where we recognize we're a single planet with finite resources. Um, I think we're going to be forced into that position because of climate change. Um, hopefully, you know, not too far in. It concerns me that we haven't addressed. I mean, we could have mitigated a a lot of things. I think we still have time for mitigation, Um, but we're really going to be forced to. And we'll just see if people 
do the right thing. That's why it's really important for individuals to learn your agency, to understand that being reactive, like freaking out over everything or letting everything bum you out and you're not thinking about how to take next steps, it really disempowers you. And I'm not saying don't ever have a bad mood. I, I have bad moods too, okay? I'm Cancerian. Um, I'm made of feelings. I don't always like it because I have a Libra moon. But it's if we don't um, if we don't take agency and learn to be more reflective about how we impact the world as individuals instead of just looking at how the world impacts us, we hand our power away, you know, first of all. Second of all, we have to co-lead with each other and that's not fighting for position, right? That's listening very deeply and developing very high level communication skills. That's gonna be necessary going forward. That's why I'm talking. The stuff I talk about now is getting you ready for 10 years from now, you know? I can do all kinds of parlor tricks and make you go, oh wow, that's happening. She called it, she called it. I do that to get your attention. My real job is to equip you with information to help you navigate these times. As an astrologer, the predictions are the shiny things that get you to look over here so I can teach you how to work with that energy. That is an astrologer's real job. And most people haven't got the study or the training. Because there's, it, it's, a real astrologer has a lineage, okay? And so I'm passing on the information you need. You don't need all of the astrological ins and outs in order to benefit from the inner information I'm sharing. When, I, when I'm talking about how to work with the energy or your consciousness, that's what's going to help prepare you to go forward. But I'm willing to do the predictions if that's what it takes to get people to look over here. You know, so, yeah. Well, people, whether you hold patriarchy in high esteem or not, you still enact in ways that benefit it. And you still hold beliefs that are influenced by patriarchy. So the first thing in dismantling patriarchy is dismantling it in yourself. You know, and worrying less about those other people. Don't worry about those other people. They're not, they're not going to do as well. I talk about that, the difference between moon phases having the same sign, new moon and full moon. The phases do have um, an impact. You know, the new is always a beginning, an intention setting, a seed sowing. Full moon is always a ripening and a fruition and a harvest, you know. So um, that's, that's that. Uh, I often talk about these things in Patreon when it's important and impacts, you know, lunar transit and understanding the quality of the energy, but certainly it plays a role, absolutely. These are things I teach in like living with Luna. Oh, thank you, Callie Dream, thank you. Yeah. Well, yeah, we were born for these times. Oh, I'm so glad you, glad you got ready ahead of time. It's so important, I'm so glad, yeah. That's why I know I sounded like I was crazy you know, starting way back in May, going, get ready, supply chain disruption, t supply chain disruption, supply, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. All these retrogrades are helping you get ready. Just get ready now, because once they go direct, all bets are off. And when Jupiter stations direct and Mercury stations direct, holy crap, monkeys, does that energy go fast? Oh my gosh, fluff ducks. It's not going to be good. I can only imagine what it's like. I, I have known forever that going to the south would be a bad idea for me. I just have too big of a mouth. I, it would be a problem. Right, he doesn't understand because the shelves aren't empty yet where you are. Um, uh, 
Desert Girl, Arizona. I did a full podcast. So if you listen to my podcast, you can listen to it on Spotify, on Apple, all, all the things where podcasts are. I did a full episode on it. I got it out tonight. If you go to the link in my bio, you can listen to my podcast. I talk about how to surf that cosmic tsunami. It's actually the 19th where the pressure builds. It'll be in the evening our time. And that, uh, that yeah, I'm calling it the T-square of boom. It's really, really big energy because um, the moon will be in opposition to Mars in Libra and they'll be exactly squaring Pluto and Capricorn. It's huge energy. It's very explosive. It's really impacting the Eastern hemisphere of the globe on a mundane astrological level. People might have a hard time sleeping. Um, I, my discord's probably gonna be blowing up with people like going, oh my God, I have a headache, I'm wired. And it's just a really good time to make sure you do a lot of self care um, on a personal level, bring your energy in bring it in. You could do active meditations because no mind is probably not going to help too much. You're going to want to do an active meditation. You could crochet. You could get up and take a walk. You could do some push-ups, do something to get that energy out. That's what's going to be really, really important. Hey! Right? As you prepped, you questioned yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, ranch life. Absolutely. No. You know, and it took me a long time to be able to give predictions without feeling crazy, you know, just because I, I used to be around a lot of people, like people will ask me, like, what do you do with people who don't believe in astrology? I have never been in a relationship where I was supported with the astrology. Like as a young astrologer, when I was just beginning, my first husband thought it was crazy. My second husband would be like, he'd always try to argue with me. I'm like, I'm not here to convince you of anything. And I told him that from the time I met him. I'm like, I don't need you to believe what I believe. I need you to stay the hell out of the way of my beliefs. Um, but he often sabotaged things. But I let him too. I didn't stop it. I didn't leave. I put up with it. I talk about that on the podcast. Like, it's really easy to blame him. It's convenient to blame him. But I didn't accept my own agency and take action. But at the same time, um, if you go back and listen to the previous episode, I talked about my Saturn return in 1999 and what that Saturn return chart set. And that's something we're going to talk about in that workshop on the 31st. We're going to talk about the Saturn return chart. Most people only talk about the process, and we certainly will talk about the process, but I'll show you how to calculate that Saturn return chart. And uh, you have to do it manually. Most softwares don't do it. Um, but it sets a divinatory chart and you can see what the theme was. In my chart, it was very 12th house, um, which made total sense, even though my Saturn's in the sixth house and work was part of what I dealt with and learning about alternative health and things like that, that was part of it. But it was a very, very metaphysical time period and it started my study into high metaphysics, deep metaphysics, um, hermeticism, Gnosticism, um, and going deep down those rabbit holes and Western mysticism. Um, not the Western mysticism a lot of people talk about. Um, that, that like, it was, it was actually the stuff that countered the Nazis. A lot of people are talking about the, the Nazis um, mysticism that was used. There was actually another group that countered them. And that was the stuff I was trained in. And it's a lot of mental training and training yourself to be non-emotionally reactive um, because one of the ways their system works is by drumming up a lot of fear, drumming up outrage, a lot of what our media does to people. So learning how to step back into a neutral space. So a lot of the traditions I was trained in um, for probably close to 15 years, um, is if that's some of the stuff I'm teaching you, is how to Kind of proof yourself against being manipulated by um, emotional energies. So that attachment to the astral plane has a lot to do. That if you're overactive in the astral, you're really open to being manipulated. You have to really know what you're doing. So, yeah. Exactly. Though, yeah, they can call you crazy all they want. Right, exactly. When you know, you know, and people who know just connect on a higher level. Exactly, true, never true. The coin shortage? I'm not sure what you mean by that. 
We've had a coin shortage for over a year. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that, spiritual goon. Your Saturn return will be in the ninth. Well, maybe, maybe you won't be. You know, there's a lot more to the ninth house than travel. It, it might be a, a formation of belief. It depends on what the Saturn return chart is as well. And that's why we're teaching that class. Yeah, the pandemic served that purpose for a lot of times. Do I predict that coins are being withheld? I don't think coins are being withheld at all. It can limit traveling. It can mean that, that you have to travel with structure. I don't know what's going on for you. I haven't seen your chart. Right? Where you're at, people either believe everything is fine or it's the apocalypse. Right? Well, there's a lot of people who want the apocalypse to happen in the evangelical churches. You know, they're looking forward to it, which is stupid. Yeah. Oh, hey, Chris. Yeah. The shortage, it depends on where you live. Um, obviously, like, if you're in a main area, like, on the coast, it may be easier to get things. Um, the closer you are to ports, the easier. Um, the closer you are to local farmer's markets, the easier it is to get food. Um, that's why I've been suggesting, even if you live in an apartment, you can grow your own lettuce. Um, you can grow, you know, you can grow something. Okay. Um, you really can. You know, it doesn't, you don't, you don't have to have an elaborate system to do that. It may not be enough to feed yourself on, but it, you can still have something. We talk about that in the Discord all the time. Um... But in certain areas, it is going to be difficult. Like my parents live in Northwest uh, Wyoming and it's, they have to, already they have to kind of go to Billings, Montana, but it's harder to get supplies into that, in the mountain states, into the Midwest. Um, so those areas will be hit. I think each area will be hit by different kind of supply weakness. So I think it depends on what it is. Right, farmer markets, exactly, yeah. You're in Texas, worried about the freezing. Yeah, I would be. I'd prepare for the freeze in Texas, absolutely. I've been warning people of that all year long. It, it's December 24th, guys. You need to be ready at Christmas Eve if you're in Texas. That grid, I just see it repeating, you know, because it went in February June, it, it certainly had its wobbles. I think Christmas is not going to be great. So be ready for it. And I hope I'm wrong. Okay. I don't, I don't care if I'm wrong, if it benefits you. I like to be wrong about negative predictions. So if somebody said, well, it didn't turn out, I'll be like, thank God for that. So, yeah. You have an apartment building. Hang on. fixed signs you haven't even gone through anything yet I'm just going to say why are you guys asking for easy life isn't easy take it from a Gen Xer suck it up buttercups because we're on quite a wild ride for quite some time you haven't even started fixed signs and in fact even when you're dealing with Pluto and Aquarius it won't be half as intense because it's a much slower transit the first couple of years will be Suck it up. We're here for the ride. If you guys knew half of what I've been through in my life, you wouldn't ask those questions. I'm watching a lot of stuff. Oh, nice. You celebrate March 24th. Beautiful. Yeah. It's not a bad day 
necessarily. I, I didn't say it's bad. I said an electrical grid could to go down, but it doesn't mean that's horrible. For some people, they'll be ready and they'll be fine. For people who aren't ready, it's going to suck. Um, it depends on your level of preparedness. Uh, but it's the last Saturn Uranus square. I've been talking about that a lot. You might be new to me. It might be the first time you see me. But it's the Saturn Uranus square, of, uh, the last one of 2021. We have another one in the fall of 2022. We have a couple of things. I'm not fond of that Jupiter-Neptune conjunction in April. I think it's going to be an expansion of COVID. And I'm going to stand by that. You're going to hear a lot of astrologers, especially young cuties with the cutie boobies, are all going to be like, you can make magic. And yes, you can. And I'll be talking about that too. But it's also an expansion of COVID. You thought you've had enough? <laughs> Try being a cardinal sign for the last 10 years or <laughs> longer since 2008. Try that. Yeah. You, oh, yeah. Well, you can still grow stuff in an apartment building. My parents grew stuff in a windowsill in Mongolia at like minus 30 degrees. You can always grow something. You just have to be inventive. You got to MacGyver it. The people who can MacGyver things are the ones you're going to do the best. If you just give up and roll over, then alrighty then. Be disempowered. Use your ingenuity. The thing that makes humans unique isn't so much our opposable thumbs, because there's plenty of animals that have opposable thumbs. Uh, it's our ability to tell ourselves stories and communicate um, the way we do. Okay, lots of animals communicate, but our storytelling and our ability to adapt is what get us forward. Those who can adapt will move forward. Those who can't, can't. And it's going to be hard on people who are really compassionate and empathetic because you're going to want to try to save everybody. You can't, you know. So as we move through the next 10 years, it's really important to put your focus on what you can do because you get overwhelmed by the big stuff. It disempowers you and disables you from being able to take any kind of action. That doesn't help. And I know how hard it is. I know what it's like to feel powerless in the face of really big situations. But you have to bring your focus back to your present and what can you do and work there. And who can you work with and work there. We get a break. Once Pluto moves and ingresses into Aquarius, we get a break. It'll feel like lead weights are off. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're the starters, right? So we're being undone so we can start new things, right? So we've been under tremendous pressure to let go of the systems within that hold us back from making changes. So we'll start the phase and then the fixed signs will come under to anchor behind us and then the mutable signs get, get a turn. It's concurrent time. Why are you guys so worried about it? You came here for this. Yeah, but you came here for this. You can't, you guys were sold a bill of goods by watching a lot of television and movies that made everything out to be, it's supposed to be this way. You came here to do this work. That's what you're here for. You're here for this. So it's deconstructing what you think is normal and getting up and owning your own agency. There is a lot of wonderful stuff going on in, in the midst of things being dis deconstructed. There is so much beauty around us as well. And it's where you put your focus. There are beautiful people doing beautiful things. So many people helping one another. So many people starting initiatives. So many green solutions being invented right now. There are companies who are only investing in sustainable solutions right now. They don't get talked about on the news. So train yourself to look to the, for the good. Yes, it's hard to let go of stuff that's holding us back. It's painful because we've been trained we needed that bullshit. 
So it, it hurts to let go because we were trained if we let go of it, something bad happens. You know, or if we let go of it, we're not normal or whatever normal is. Normal is, is a setting on a washing machine and it, it isn't real, you know, but we came here for this evolutionary period. It's, it's, a, it's a very big evolutionary time in human history. You came here for this. You're needed in this. And that's where Saturn comes into play. You know, it's not about having a chosen one. It's a chosen us. Chosen ones are bullshit. It's about having us work in concert together in small groups that connect with other small, think Legos, small pieces that interconnect with other pieces. That's what this time period is that we're moving into. Yeah, we can. We can do a lot. Um, we can certainly mitigate it. And we can certainly, I mean, there are, we still have opportunity, according to the sciences, scientists, to, uh, to reverse. I think we'll mitigate first. I don't think we will reverse quickly. Um, but I think we'll adapt and we'll mitigate. I think there's going to be some things that force us to do that. And usually stuff that forces us to grow like that isn't very pleasant to observe um at least in my experience and so it, that's why I, I teach to bring your energy inside instead of feeling everything because it can be very disempowering and very difficult when you're super sensitive and you kind of feel it all um it, it's it, it's not useful and it isn't helpful to feel it all so you want to be able to focus in on your present and look at what you are capable of dealing with. So, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the north and the poles have shifted before. In, in, all you have to do, Google it. The poles have shifted before. it's okay if, if if things come up it's okay it's all right it's okay for it to come up you just you notice it and then you correct it the power is in the noticing because that's where you get to make a decision oh this is going on what am i going to do about it i keep going down that road or i correct my course the power you know so the the power is in the noticing the perfections and the correction oh, i'm so glad kirsten There you go. Work that shit out cleaning the garage. Exactly. We've always been divided. It's not going to take all of humanity to make what happens. We don't need unity consciousness. Unity consciousness actually scares the crap out of me. I don't want to be the Borg. Um... We're here to accept one another as is. You know, so not everybody's going to think the same way, but we're going to have to act globally and we're going to be forced into those positions. It's going to be, there's going to be enough things that happen that force that. So, and that'll be within the next, you know, five years. Yeah, the moon was, was square to Uranus. And people are feeling this thing coming. It's kind of like this. A lot of people are like, oh, shit, stuff's going down. You're way more perceptive than you give yourself credit for. So you're feeling energy. But the moon was square Uranus today. So everybody was like, okay, something is off. There's a lot going on. Um, you're probably receiving, you know. But most people, like, don't give credence to their own perceptual skills, whether you're perceiving energy or perceiving emotions or you know, but stuff's about to get real and people know it. They can feel it. You know, you can, people can kind of gloss over it, but, you know, on the news or what have you, but, it, you know, we all know things, things are getting ready to change more, you know, and it's not bad. It ends up being for the good, but nothing, you know, everybody wants this bippity boppity boo, boom, magic wand. Everything's better. Boo, boo, gone. It doesn't work that way. We couldn't, if we were to eradicate patriarchy today, overnight, people wouldn't be able to handle that kind of change. You know. 
it, it, there would just be some kind of repatterning of of the dominance and control because that's what people know it, it, it takes incremental changes you know incremental so we're going through a fairly rapid time but it has to you know that's why that pluto and aquarius it's a 30-year transit it's gonna take time to go through it that's a good thing <laughs> right ben no screw being cautious with my words anymore i don't really care things are about to fall apart enough i know i can just speak my mind so you might you might have to leave i know plenty of people who are relocating to better locations for them and their beliefs absolutely exactly yeah it needs to be a methodical you know process you know just step by step by step by step and it will it'll probably be more like this like a spiral and the energy going back and like like this like a gyroscope almost is kind of how i feel that energy going so by the way did you check out my nails look at those aren't those cute I do too. It's great to watch the labor movement grow. Absolutely. It's way past time. Ray and Matt, you got it. Yeah. Aries sun, Leo rising, Scorpio moon. Is that why? Yeah. Because you're here for those changes. Me too. Best time in my life. Don't ever make me go back to 1985 again. I did some cool stuff in the 85, but it was also the worst year of my life. And never take me back to the 70s. I mean, ugh, we're already doing a replay. But I've warned people for years, politically, we've never gotten out of the recession of the 70s. We just changed policies trying to band-aid over it. So this is not a new issue. We're dealing with the problem of the 70s, finally. So... Yeah. Right? I almost always get my nails matte. It's rare that I don't do matte nails. My rings do have significance to me, yes. Cap, Aquarius, Taurus. Yeah, you have a whole new life. I bet you do. Yeah. All right, guys. I need to go right and I need to get some other stuff done. So I am going to get ready to end this. How is my new car? My new car is awesome. Yeah, me too. When I was little, I remember those gas lines. They went for miles, it seemed. I remember it like, took so long in line to get gas. I was like four or five, maybe six. It was crazy. Yeah, thank you guys. Make sure you go listen to my podcast. It, the link is in my bio. Um, so if you just click the link in my bio after the live, you can get to the podcast. There's two episodes you want to listen to. The one today, which is on the T-square boom and the Aries moon. Teach you how to surf that cosmic tsunami that's coming. And it is going to be a cosmic tsunami. So just be really aware. You might need a pillow for it and some chocolate. Um, and then the previous episode, I talked about Mercury and Saturn. It's really about training your energy um, and training your mind. Um, so there's some really good information in there. So um, anyway, I look forward to speaking with you. I'll be on again tomorrow. Mwah.